and gentlemen, that is the Vancouver Canucks. Um, GPA grade of the Vancouver Canucks for the Puck Drops here. Welcome, everybody. We are in the next episode of the Puck Drops here, and this one is grading the Canucks team that started well with with famed rookie Elias Peterson. And we look at the record in the Western Conference. 35, 36, and 11, 81 point team. They were fifth in the Pacific Division and did not qualify for the postseason. So, obviously, they grade organization, coaching, and players. Uh, we'll go on center. Uh, first center, you look at Jay Beagle. The Vancouver Canucks took from the, the Washington Capitals, and he played 57 games. For the Canucks, scoring three goals, 10 assists, and tallying 13 points. Not bad for a face-off center whose job is not meant to get the puck into the net. He's, uh, second one, a look at Adam Gaudet. Adam Gaudet was a uh, was another young center. Excuse me, this uh, source I'm getting is a little slow on it. I just apologize for, for this. Uh, Adam Gaudet, 56 games played. And 56 games played for Gaudet. Uh, and also, he played five, he scored five goals, seven assists, and 12 points, which wasn't terrible for that player, but you're going to need more production for your lower forwards, as is noted. Uh, Marcus Granlund was another center that they, they like in Vancouver. He is a... Uh, uh, He is a young center that they have, a young sweep. Uh, 77 games played for Granlund. The young Finn is is 27 years old, 26 years old, 12 goals scored, 10 assists, 22 points. Again, a good player, but you're going to need more from Granlund. Um, Bo Horvat, one of their... One of the top leaders, of course. The six six foot young center from London, Ontario. The first pick of the two thousand and thirteen NHL draft. He played in every single game, scoring twenty seven goals, thirty four assists, sixty one points, which is a good amount for him as well. Uh, you can take a look at young Zach Mico Zach McElwain. And McElwain, a 22-year-old center from Charlottetown, played in four games this year, only tallying one point and one assist, one point, which was from one assist. So not a great year from him, but he didn't play a large amount either. Uh, Tyler Mott, another of the low-end centers that they have. Mott's a good uh, a grinder, another young player, though. Wait on that as well. Taylor Mott played 74 games this year, the 24-year-old, 29 goals, 7 assists, 60 points. Again, mucker grinder type player, but you're going to need higher total. 16 points is not a lot. Uh, Elias Peterson, the, the Swedish rookie, drafted number five in the Flames in the season opener as well. A, su a super young uh, center did Peterson. Peterson was. And he is an incredible center with incredible speed, incredible skill, incredible hands, 
a centerpiece of the organization. And I believe also Elias Peterson, the Canucks people may not know, traded prospect they got from Ottawa for Alex Burroughs, Jonathan Dolan to San Jose for um, Lennish Carlson, who is a young Swede winger, and he's going to fit well with Peterson, almost a recreation of the, the twins, the Sedins. But the 20-year-old Peterson is skill in his own right. 71 games played. He only missed... He only missed uh, uh, 11, and he scored 28 goals, he assists, and 66 points as a rookie. Second leading scorer on the team. And uh, and uh, Timmy Schaller, the New Hampshire native, who is the Boston Bruins for some time. That also a d- definite... Good player there. He was one of their other uh, free agents that they looked at. With a with Jay Beagle, just a guy that they really found to be to be some sort of player. So Scholler, another stats call. The 28-year-old, 47 games played, three goals, 7 assists, 10 points at a healthy rate either. Um, Ryan Spooner, another guy they ended up getting from the Edmonton Oilers with an eventual trade. Uh, New York Rangers, uh, Edmonton Oilers, and New York Rangers on the Boston Bruins. Eventually, he finally ends up the 27 year older in Vancouver. And he played 52 games alongside the New York Rangers, Edmonton Oilers, Vancouver Canucks, and their minor league affiliates. And he played in 52 games, scoring three goals, telling six assists and nine points. Decent for Spooner. And then the last one, Suter, we look at. Brandon Suter, 30, 30-year-old, didn't play wet much. 26 games played, four goals scored, two assists and six points for Suter. And that is a good amount for a player that did not play a two. Uh, centers, I would put the GPA at 1.6. There's potential, but... I think the potential is gigantic, but the output was not. You got to get higher scoring numbers to the Vancouver Canucks. And I will begin to look at wingers. Then you, then you see Sven Berchi, 26 year old, only played 26 games, a high draft pick in, in 2011, uh, so nine goals scored, five assists, and 14 points. And so the check did not have a lot of scoring points, which he's going to need to have. And top skill Brock Besser, 22 year old winger. He has he had played in 69 games, scoring 26 goals, 30 assists, and, and 56 points. I'd also, like to know since there are people watching this, if you have any questions about the Vancouver Canucks, um, do so. Ask me; I will answer any as I do these GPA grading. Uh, so Besser had a uh, not as good as a year he had the previous season, but he had an excellent season for a guy that's specifically there to score goals and he did so able to willingly and excellently put the puck in, into the wide open cage louis erickson a guy that used to play for boston and the dallas stars he comes in a 33 year old veteran 81 games played the most games played by any vancouver canuck skater this season scoring 11 goals telling 18 assists and 29 points the the Swede needs to have more points in there. I know he's an older guy, but 81 games played, 29 is not enough, in my opinion. We'll take a look at Nikolai Goldobin. Goldobin, a big, a big winger, 23 year old, 63 games played in the National Hockey League this season. Seven goals, 20 assists, and 27 points for Goldobin. And again, numbers have to raise. Numbers have to go at a higher echelon for the Swede. Um, Josh Levo is another younger guy that they've had through their system for some time through Utica and into Vancouver. 76 games played for Josh Levo, 14 goals, 10 assists, and 24 points for the kid. Uh, good amount, but again, not enough. And the next winger, Tanner Pearson, a 
player who had also played through three teams this regular season, playing through the Los Angeles Kings, Pittsburgh Penguins, and in the Goodbranson deal, he comes to the Vancouver Canucks. 26-year-older, playing in 80 games this season, scoring 18 goals, tallying nine assists and 27 points for Vancouver. Uh, again, he's a great scorer, and he will find some time to score at that point as well for the Canucks, but it's good. It has to raise. It has to raise at some point. And when we look at Antoine Rossaw, Antoine Rossaw, 29 year older, 65 games played, nine goals scored, 22 assists, and 31 points for the um, Vancouver Canucks. And that is a actually a good amount for Rossaw. He, one of their scorers that's starting to turn it around. And we'll look at and we look at um, Rattan as it pulls up. Just a really, he's a really good player. He's a, a six-one winger from Langley, BC. Just a definitive scorer. And Vertanen, here are the stats, he's playing in 70 goals, 15, 70 games, 15 goals, 10 assists, 25 points for the Vancouver Canucks. 25 points, uh, decent amount. Uh, I took the wingers because of the low amount, 1.6. And they just need, again, potential is there, but you need to have higher scoring, higher point totals, pulling in like droves. Uh, we look at the defense, and the defenseman for the Vancouver Canucks. Alexander Viega. A young guy there, well, a younger guy there that start that's starting to really uh play to his point. Forty one games forty one games play the Montreal native. And he scored two goals, fourteen assists for sixteen points with for Alex Viega. Uh decent defenseman, decent amount of points there. And now Alexander Edler the defenseman for the Vancouver Canucks. He is the only player on this team that was on the magical 2011 Stanley Cup final team. I also will say this to all Vancouver, any and all Vancouver fans that are watching this uh, podcast and this film, I, but you know what? They think about the future. You think about the present, the Vancouver Canucks are going to have a chance to go ahead and make another great playoff run with a good young team. But uh, anyway, Edler, a veteran, I personally believe maybe he should be the captain as leadership as he has. 33-year-old, they're playing in 56 games, scoring 10 goals, 24 assists, 34 points, and two game-winning goals, two of them in overtime, one of them against Calgary, and just a great season he had. One exceptional one that a lot of people didn't definitely did not expect. When you look at Quinn Hughes, the eighth pick from 2016, that was drafted through from Vancouver. And he comes in, Quinn Hughes, for a few games. Not too many. Uh, five games played, no goals, but three assists, three points. For... For the Vancouver Canucks, and that is going to build. They really like Quinn Hughes, and they think to to score definitively. Ben Hutton played 69 games, scoring five goals, and he tallied 15 assists, 20 points for Hutton. Decent, but it's it has to uh, come at some point. And Derek Pouliot. Another young defenseman. He was drafted by the Penguins, but he comes to Vancouver at 25 years old, playing 62 games, scoring three goals, nine assists, 12 points. Decent, decent amount. And then the young defenseman, Brogan, Brogan Rafferty. A 23-year-old defenseman who played two games and no points, no goals, no assists for Rafferty, but you really can't judge on that young defenseman. He could be something or he could fizzle out. Time will only tell on him. 
Uh, Ashton Sautner, another young defender, 24-year-old, played 17 games, no goals, one assist, one point. A lot of young defenders. They, they will grow at some point. Luke Shen, former Duck, he comes in in 26 games, only scored two assists, no goals for him as well. Decent keep. And now Tro Troy Stetcher, you look at 78 games played in the National Hockey League this season, scoring two goals and 21 assists, 23 points for the 25-year-old. Uh, that's a good amount. I, I like that amount for Stetcher. And now the older brother of Jets mucker uh, Brandon Tan uh, Tanev, Chris Tanev, the 29-year-old scoring phenom defenseman. He did not have a good year this season, though. Playing in 55 games, scoring only two goals, 10 assists, 12 points. That is uncalled for. That will have to raise, and again, at some point, for Tanev. Uh, young Josh Tivis, the last defenseman, and Tivis, the 24-year-older who played in one game, no goals, no assists, no points. And that is te that is uh, the 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 defenseman the the uh, defenseman. I would say for a uh, GPA on them would be one point four because the the points haven't been there. I love what Edler did, but Tanev's got got to gel at some point and got to just blossom into the super player that he can be, that he is, and that did not happen this year, so I ranked them that way. We look at goaltending. Jacob Markstrom, 29-year-old Swede, seems to be the face of the goalie franchise there. Playing in 60 games, starting all 60 of them, winning 28 games, losing 23 of them, having some rough stretches later in the middle of the year, and Nine of those games going to overtime. Save, goalie average 2.77. Not terrible. Save, save percentage 9.12. That's pretty good. I think Markstrom's the future of this franchise. Though. I really think that he's going to be the anchor in the goal. So I don't think it's too much of an issue. Um, you take their, his backup that's been in Utica for the past few years in Thatcher Demko. He's a 23-year-old. Year older. He's been in the program since 2014. And Demko... Played nine games this season, started eight of them, and won four of them, lost three of them, or, or an overtime game. He'll be the guy that's going to be coming up and can be a piece, a definite piece. Demko can. One of those games won overtime. Save percentage 0.913. Goal average 2.81. The numbers are better than Ant than Markstrom for three, four games, but I don't think Demko's ready yet. But soon, I could see him being like a Bennington, being a superstar, especially if the Canucks make a deep playoff run. And then the last goaltender we look at is Jake Keeley, a rookie, and he did he was listed on the roster, but he did not play or have any action in any NHL games. I put the goaltending at a 2.0 because I think they did better than most parts of the year. Even though there was so much potential, I think the goaltending did good at, at parts, holding the Canucks in games that they had no reason being in and helping them win and being in a position for a playoff spot for most of the season. They're definitely going to be good next year. Um, coaching, let's talk about coaching. I I don't know how much Green, how good Green is as a head coach. He's a younger guy, a guy that can explain it, got to lead them to the promised land where they want to go. I don't know if he's the the correct boss for the Vancouver Canucks. There's something they'll have to look at and but I will I will put him on a 1.7. I think he did a decent job. Then uh, there's a GPA of the coach. Uh, for GPA of the management, Jim Benning. Well he's had a rough stint with the Vancouver Canucks as manager. Uh, excuse me, but uh, Jim Benning has made some good decisions. We'll see what he does in free agency. Um, I think you give him some point of a leash because he's made some bad signings at points, but Jim Benning is, has made some good decisions as general manager. I think you keep him where he is. I would give him the GPA of 1.9, and we'll see how he does with these young players. Uh, the young player I like for the, um, for the Vancouver Canucks, 
Oh, and I I apologize. I'll quickly slip this one in for the Vancouver Canucks video. So anyone who didn't go to the Toronto Maple Leafs video, I didn't mean to do this. I didn't talk about – I completely apologize. I didn't talk about the young player and the older player. The young player for the Toronto Maple Leafs, quickly, I would say that – that. Uh, Needs, that's played well. I really like is Andres Janssen, the older player that needs to to uh, excel at some point and get even better is Austin Matthews, even though he is still a young player, older by way of being the program. Back to Vancouver Canucks, and uh, older play, uh, younger player that I think has so much potential. I know he's already insane, but it's Elias Pettersson. He has the chance to be one of the best Swedish players, and I think maybe even the best NHL players in the league ever. His shot is incredible. His legs and his hands are insane. He's got he's got the fundamental ability of a, a star player. Also, you need to watch Linus Carlson when he comes to the league. He's going to be an incredible player too with him on that line. Older player that needs to step up at some point. It's I mean, it's Chris Tanev. 13, po 13 points on two goals for him. I know he's a defenseman, but he's been one of their higher scoring profile guys. He's got to lead them. He's got to be one of those top teams in, in a in a rebuilding team that can make the playoffs in a few years and make runs. If he's going to be on the Vancouver Canucks, he has to to start heading up. Uh, GPA full grade of the team, I would give a one point. Uh, now you know what? I'll give them a two point two. I think they did a good job this year, and they have so much potential. Keyword: potential, potential, potential. Can't waste it. Be the Vancouver Canucks. All right. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for liking, sub, watch this video. Uh, Anything, pay, pay attention to this. Really like doing these GPA videos. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, the next one.